Hello everybody, my name is Cyberwolf and welcome back to Butterfly Soup. Um, last time we left off, Noelle had gone to visit um, Taiwan. So, let's see how this all unfolds. Uh, that evening, Noelle and her parents walked to the subway. Here's our train, we should reach the night market and a few stops. Uh, I hate talking, uh, taking public transit, the trains are always filthy and poorly maintained. As they board the MRT carriage, Noelle steals herself from the stench of vomit, urine, and cigarettes she's grown to expect from American subways. But to her amazement, the car's shiny floors and seats look so squeaky clean you could eat off of them. It's absolutely spotless. Pleasantly surprised, she sits beside her parents in, in a gleaming plastic seat. Uh, Shippai Station. You can actually clearly hear what they're saying. It's not... Indis uh, indistinct rumbling like on uh, like on Bart what is Bart an LCD screen across from her has neatly displayed the names of the previous current and next stations this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen her phone buzzes her heart leaps when she sees that it's Akarsha <laughs> why did you send this I thought you liked me. Even if I hypothetically liked you, uh, why would I want to see this awful picture of you? Personally, I think it's very hot and sexy of me to play video games against little kids at fr uh, Fry's Electronics and lose. Is that what you're doing? Nah, I'm back home now playing the game I bought. It's called Portal. Dude, you'd love it. I don't play computer games. No, you'd love it, trust me. It's not like other games where you're some guy shooting stuff. You're a girl, and it's a puzzle game. Uh, it's a science research facility. Oh? I'll give you the CD. Just play it. I'll consider it after I return from my trip. Oh yeah, you're in Taiwan. Uh, what are you up to right now? I'm riding the subway with my parents. How's that? I hope they aren't giving you a hard time. Actually, ever since we've arrived in Taipei, they've been in good spirits. I've never seen my mother so relaxed before. She must be happy to be back home to see her family. Oh, dang. That's good. Uh, we're on the way to the night market right now. Feel paranoid uh, that everyone can tell I'm a foreigner. Oh, I get what you mean. When I'm in India, they can tell I'm an American before I even open my mouth. Just from the way I carry myself. Her mom sighs as Noelle taps, her on, uh, taps out her response on her phone. There you are, addicted to your phone. How am I addicted? To compare to other teenagers, I barely use it. You spend so much time talking to your friends, but friendships are only temporary. As soon as it's inconvenient, they'll all disappear. Ep Do you not have friends, ma'am? After I moved to America for your future, not a single one kept in touch with me. The only people you can trust in your fa uh, is your family, and I was so far away from all of mine. My life as of an immigrant is a lonely one. Is she hoping I'm going to console her, console her or thank her for making such a brutal sacrifice for my sake? It was her own decision as a full-grown adult to move here. It wasn't up to me. Her mom sighs heavily and stares out the window. There's a message she's always trying to impart on me. I'm lonely because of you. Noelle watches the scenery fly by. Uh, after half an hour, the train arrives at their destination precisely on time. Let's look for clothes. You need new ones. But I have plenty of clothes already. They all have holes in them. You should throw them away already. Noelle browses through a sea of clothing racks with her parents. A hideous pair of beige pants catches her eye. This would complement many items in my wardrobe. <laughs> she turns it over in her hands, searching for its price tag, but it's missing. I'm gonna ask how much these trousers are. Uh, do you know how? Are you serious? Of course I know how. Miffed, she marches over to the stall's cashier and shows her the pants. Uh, Lina ask how much these pants? 200 NTD. That's only about $7. What a bargain. I waste by this. What'd you say? <laughs> I stumbled over the pronunciation. This. I want to buy this. Okay. 
<laughs> Shame Noel doesn't dare speak another word as the cashier bags her purchase. Excellent. Simply superb. After six years of Chinese school, I still can't speak, read, or write Mandarin. She finds her way back to her parents, who are just finishing up their purchases purchase uh, at the neighboring stall. I'm hungry. Let's get dinner at the food court. What for? The food stalls are all over the place. We can just eat as we shop. No, I want to probably sit down somewhere and have a meal. Damn. So many restaurants all in, like, one central spot. It always feels like... It always feels like whenever I go to the mall... And it's been a long while since I got into the mall, but anytime I would grab something from the food court in the mall, I would kind of always feel bad for, like, the other restaurants. <laughs> like, you kind of just, like, look over and lock eyes with one of the workers that are, like, frying something, and it's just like, I'm sorry I didn't pick you. <laughs> I promise I will next time. Noelle follows her parents down the flight of stairs to the underground food court. It's bizarre space that reminds Noelle of a mirror maze. They sit down at a st it's underground too? Holy shit. This place is crazy. Uh, they sit down at a stall and Noelle scans the menu, which is conveniently printed directly on the surface of the table. Yo, that's kind of sick actually. Uh, something chicken, something something soup. Noel has to pick her dish based on the pictures, like a toddler would. I mean, that's how I do it. <laughs> uh, do you know what you're getting? I will order the oyster omelette. It's seldom seen in America, so I should take the chance to eat it here. That sounds gross. <laughs> As the stall worker comes over and takes her parents' order, Noah mentally recites hers, uh, determined not to be rendered an in in uh, inarticulate child again. I know this. This is kindergarten level vocabulary. I want oyster omelette. That sounds a tad crude, although in English I normally say something more like, I'd like to have the, the oyster omelet. What do you want to order? I want oyster omelet. <laughs> Woman jots her order down on a pad of paper, nodding. Are you American-born Chinese? Uh, my, chi my Chinese was that bad? I am. I could tell, I guess from your accent, so heavy. Noel's mom sighs as the woman walks off to prepare their meals. All those years of Chinese school, wasted. <laughs> but I mean, then again, I just don't really like oysters. <laughs> the food arrives within minutes. Noelle tries a gooey spoonful of her oyster omelet. It's delicious. You would never guess this only cost three dollars. Really? Let me try. The parents each taste a spoonful of the oyster omelet and shrug, unimpressed. This is below average. I've had way better ones around here before. Yeah, this is really what it's supposed to- this isn't really what it's supposed to taste like. Well, I'm never here, so I couldn't have known that. Annoyed now, Noel takes another bite of the oyster omelet. This is the best thing I've ever eaten. I should find out what this place is called so I can find it again. She looks up at the name of the stall, but it's in Chinese. I can't read it. I better savor it while it lasts. This omelet I can only taste once. All too soon, it's over. Noel sighs as they get up and continue shopping. You should have tried harder to convince me to learn Chinese. Are you serious? We told you not to quit so many times. But you never properly explained why it was so important not to. All you did was give me condescending lectures about how I was too young to understand why it mattered, and how I'd be an embarrassment if I didn't learn. English is our second language. It's hard to explain things to you now. And it's true, you are an embarrassment. Last week I saw your neighbor's son Michael moving, mowing, mo moving the lawn, and he greeted me in Chinese. Hello, auntie. See, that's what, sp that's what happens when you listen to your parents. Michael goes to Taiwan with his family every summer. That's the reason he's more fluent, not because he was a superior child to me. Why didn't he just- why didn't we just visit Taiwan more often when I was younger? That alone would have made me more interested in learning. I feel like I've been trying to understand Chinese culture by looking at it through a soda straw until now. You think we didn't want to visit Taiwan more too? The airplane tickets are expensive. We have to save up for years just for one trip. Oh. But... Even so, you should have done more to show me that speaking Mandarin could be a positive experience. Why did you always speak to me in English even though you can't fully express yourselves in that language? 
If he had conversed with me in Chinese from a young age, I would have naturally picked up from daily use. We thought you'd have an accent if we did it, if we did that. We were worried you wouldn't fit in at school. But that's ridiculous. There's no way I would have developed an accent when everyone else I interact with spoke English. I would have grown up bilingual without any ill effects. Resigned, her dad shrugs. Well, too late now. What can you do? <laughs> the last day of the trip. Noelle and her relatives visit the uh, columbarium housing Amma's ashes. Uh, my mom visits this place every time she's in Taiwan. Dang, this place is fancy. Noelle follows her grandpa into the worship hall. I crossed an ocean to see my grandpa, and I've barely spoken to a word to him. It's not out of lack of interest. He must have lived a fascinating life. He is the only grandparent I have left. But how do I gain access to the heart of a stranger? Where do you even begin? Tell me about yourself. Who says that in their own uh, to their grandfather? To their own grandfather? It would sound like a job interview. Even if I knew what I wanted to say, what am I capable of saying in Chinese? Today is Sunday. I'm a student. She watches Chun Hua uh, take a lotus petal from the glass bowl and offer it to the giant Buddhas. Noel, we're going to pray for Alma. Take a flower petal from the bowl over there. Can I pray in English? If you have to. Unsure uh, what she's supposed to do, Noelle does her best to imitate her parents. Hello, Buddha. I seriously doubt that you exist. But I'm sure Alma was a wonderful woman. Chunhua deposits her lotus petal in the bowl before the Buddhas, her eyes shining with tears. I miss Alma. To Noelle's surprise, her aunt embraces Chunhua like it's the most natural thing in the world. They're so comfortable with each other. Is that how mothers and daughters are supposed to be? When I look at my mother, the first emotion I feel is stress. Noel deposits her lotus petal in the bowl and joins Agong, who's waiting to the side. He smiles awkwardly at her as they stand together in silence. What should I do? Try to build a relationship in broken Mandarin? Tell him I like reading and my favorite color is green? Or do I let the moment pass me by, say nothing and remain strangers? Am I a terrible person if that's what I do? Come on, we're going upstairs. After an elevator ride, they arrive at the floor housing her grandma's ashes. Amma's over here. Noel follows everyone down the hall to one of the uh, niches. Niches. Uh, the only thing uh, distinguishing. And from the others of the tiny name tag on the door. Not that I can read it, even if I could, I don't know the names of any of my relatives. And at this point, I'm too embarrassed to ask. Even Chun Hua's name I only know by sound. I have no idea what it looks like. Noel's dad points to the units beside Amaz. Your mom and I bought our spots too. Already? You're only in your 50s. There's a limited number, so we made sure to reserve them before they were all gone. I suppose my parents are fairly old. They didn't manage to have me until their 40s. Going off the average American life expectancy, they probably have around 25 years left. Noel's mom wipes her eyes as they open, up, uh, open the little door of Alma's unit. Will I cry when my mother dies someday? I'm starting to seriously worry that I won't. What kind of monster does that make me? What kind of cold, heartless person cares so little about her own parents? Is there something wrong with me? Do I just not form emotional bonds as deeply as ordinary people do? When they get back to Agong's apartment, Noelle and her mom begin packing to leave. Are you all flying back tonight? Actually, my dad will be in Taiwan for another week, tending to business matters. So my mother and I are flying back alone. Ah, uh, one week was too short. As Noelle fits the last of the, her clothes into a rolling bag, Chun Hua takes a seat, pulling a thick tome out of her backpack. Noelle feels a twinge of sadness as she watches her cousin read her huge academic-looking book. If I'd grown up in Taiwan, we probably would have become close. 
Suddenly, a strange thought occurs to Noelle. If I'd grown up here, would my personality be shaped into something more similar to Chun Hua's? How much of my personality is just a product of being raised by an immigrant helicopter mom with no friends or family around to balance her out? Would my mother and I have gotten along? The magazine Chun Hua showed Noelle earlier is still out on the coffee table, taunting her. I'm finished packing, so I have some time to kill before we leave for the airport. Maybe I can translate the poem my mother wrote. Noel digs her emergency Chinese to English dictionary out of her backpack. I was being a petulant baby in elementary school. All I have to do is uh, persevere and power through learning the language properly this time. I'll simply look up each word I don't know and burn its pun uh, pronunciation and meaning into my memory. Unfortunately, she doesn't know a single word in the poem's first line. After spending 15 minutes pounding seven words into her memory, her enthusiasm evaporates. This is actu this actually is incredibly difficult. I'm not surprised that I have nothing to show for my six years of Chinese school. It feels like the knowledge is just washing over my brain like water over plastic. Is my brain just not wired for this? Could it be genetic? Even after living the majority of their lives in America, my parents haven't mastered English either. It takes another 15 minutes for her to finally overcome the first line of the poem. At last, onto the second line, and I already know all of these words. Mirror, flower, water, moon. Total gibberish. Is it supposed to sound poetic mushed together like that? Mirror, flower, water, moon. Nimal uh, feels the urge to tear the magazine to shreds. Perhaps noticing her hand quaking with barely a suppressing rage, Chun Hua peer, uh, peers over Noelle's shoulder to see what she's reading. What's wrong? Nothing. I'm just translating one of my mom's poems. Why don't you ask your mom for help? I'd rather die. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe I can help instead. Where are you stuck? Uh, what's this supposed to mean? Oh, that's a... Uh, how do you call it? A saying. Like the lesson of a story. Flower in the mirror, moon in the water. Pretty much, it means something that you can see but never grasp. Like a flower reflected in a mirror, or the moon shining in the on the water surface. Yes, you can't reach your hand through the mirror or take the and take the flower out. It's impossible. You can only look, never have it. I see. So, mirror, flower, water, moon is shorthand for something beautiful, but unattainable. Pretty much. Da Yi cheers as Noelle's mom magazines uh, manages to zip her bulging suitcase closed. Ready to go to the airport? Let's go. Noelle gives the half-translated poem one last despairing look before flipping the magazine shut. Is that what I've been chasing after this whole time? A flower in the mirror? If only I get... If only I get straight A's. I'll have a normal relationship with my parents. If only I land a summer internship, I'll have a normal relationship with my parents. If only I become fluent in Chinese, I'll have a normal relationship with my parents. What if it was never possible from the start, no matter what I did? That evening, Noelle and her mom make landfall in California. Instead of driving home from the airport, they take the BART back. Noelle wrinkles her nose as she inhales a stench of vomit, urine, and cigarettes. Dad's car is parked at the airport garage. Why not just drive it home? We wouldn't be able to get gas. It's not safe to win for women to pump gas. It's so easy for criminals to grab you and drive away. We live in one of the safest suburbs in the entire US. Is that why she always has my dad pump the gas? Besides, I can't read fast enough. When you're driving on the freeway, the signs pass by so quickly. Noelle reluctantly sits down on a filthy, worn seat with a suspicious brown stain on it. The conductor mumbles something unintelligible over the intercom as this uh, train stops at a station. A breathless man enters the train car just in time before the door is shut. His eyes frantically scour its interior. Does this train go to Berkeley? It is not. This is the uh, Fremont train. Shit! I need to get off at the next station. As the train continues onward, Noel notices a puddle of liquid traveling down the floor. What was that? Did someone spill their drink? Ah! Fucking nasty! That bitch pissed in her seat! What? Disgusted! Noel recoils and keeps her feet as 
uh, far as possible from the pee spreading down the floor. So fucking gross, fucking bitch. What's he saying? The urine is a biohazard. We need to get off the train at the next station. Once the doors open, Noelle and her mom hastily dragged their luggage off the train and onto the concrete platform. Maybe we should have driven after all. I didn't know Bart was like this. We're still for several stops from our destination. Noelle and her mom wait on a bench for their next train home. Nine car trains, uh, nine car train to Fremont in six minutes. Our next train will arrive in six minutes. Okay. Good thing I was here with you, or else I wouldn't know what to, uh, what train to take. Exhausted, Noel stares at the dark line of trees ahead of them. It's cold. Why are we here? Because the hobo lady peed on the floor? That's not what I mean. Why did you move from Taiwan to America? To give you more opportunities. That doesn't make any sense. Taiwan is superior to the U.S. by every conceivable metric, and it's not even close. Taiwan has socialized health care, more robust public infrastructure, and one of the lowest poverty rates in the world. Americans live shorter lives, even worse, and not as good at math and science. Taiwan was different in the past. All you see is Taiwan now, but it didn't used to be this way. And America was strong. We were scared China was going to invade Taiwan. But they didn't. In all this time that we've lived in America, nothing happened. That's true, but it could have happened. But the plain truth is that it didn't. You could have just stayed put. I could have grown up in Taiwan like Chun Hua and the rest of my cousins, and everything would have been fine. But we didn't know that. You think we had a crystal ball telling the future? Noel's mom perks up as a train stretches to a stop, at the, uh, screeches to a stop at the station. Uh, Fruitvale, Dublin, Pleasanton train. Is this our train? No, it's not. Noel's mom settles grumpily back on the bench. You know how Chun Hua wants to study in America? Yes. I told her not to do it. It's not worth it. I didn't realize how hard it would be. You'll be far from everyone you know. And your kids won't understand uh, what you're talking about. You can't communicate with them. I didn't know that uh, if you have kids in America, your kids will be American. That wasn't obvious to you? <laughs> no. Well, at least we made it home, I guess. That was, uh, that was a journey. Noelle waits with her friends for the basketball, baseball, basketball, baseball club meeting to begin. How was Taiwan? It was amazing. The subway system, it was so punctual and efficient. And the signage was so clear. If you ever visit Dia, you don't have to be afraid of getting lost or not hearing the announcements like you do on BART. Everyone there meticulously organizes their recyclables too. If people fail to sort their materials properly, the government will fine them up to $200. Wait, do they do that in Korea too. Interesting, perhaps Korea is more similar to Taiwan than I thought. I bet Korea did it first, then Taiwan just stole it. What makes you think that? Dia listens to the small, uh, listens with a small smile as, uh, Noel continues extolling the virtues of Taipei's trash collecting system instead of describing any of the landmarks she visited. You must have liked it there. You're right, I did. What do you call it when you're grateful for the things your parents have done for you, but at the same time you feel like they made critical mistakes that'll probably affect you forever? Isn't that just life? Oh, I suppose it is. Damn, my shoelaces keep coming undone. Noelle glances at her to her left, where Akarsha is crouched over trying, tying her uh, sneaker laces. This poor child. <laughs> Why have you tried your, tied your shoelaces like that? This is the Silicon Valley, Frenchman. The land of innovation. Did you get me any souvenirs on your trip? No. <gasps> Meanie! I didn't get anyone anything. Uh, we had limited luggage space. 
All we brought back were snacks that we can't be that can't be found here and dubious beauty products my mom wanted. Dubious beauty products? Like what? Nail clippers with bombs in them? What? Why would there be nail clippers with bombs in them? All I meant was products with questionable value like skin whitening cream. Wait, skin whitening cream? Like to make your skin lighter? Yes, Chinese beauty standards are all kinds of messed up. It's been ingrained very deeply into people's minds that the lighter your skin is, the better. That's just like in India. Yeah, oh my god, I thought it was just a brown thing. You guys have colorism too. Oh, is it similar in your culture? It's a whole thing, you have no idea. I would argue I do have an idea. My mother even tells me not to spend time outside to avoid getting a tan. Oh, my mom does that too. They have those dumb, tr uh, dumb as fuck skin creams in Korea too. It's the same. It's the same. Yellow and brown parents, they match just like pee and poo. <laughs> the fuck you- <laughs> What the fuck, man? Akarsha, have you ever considered not speaking? <laughs> You mean? How mean? The second I open my mouth, you all jump and slap my balls. <laughs> Do you have to word it like that? <laughs> I'm trying to use more phrases with the word balls in, <laughs> in my normal conversations. Why? I don't know. I just think it adds more flavor. <laughs> chicken nuggets assemble. The chicken nuggets gather around Krissa and Liz as they begin the meeting. <sighs> So we've got good news and bad news. Good news, we have a game today. Bad news, it's just the Niles baseball team again. They're the ones, they're the only ones who would play us again. Oh, that's not surprising. We either win by pulling some weird shenanigans or lose so badly we get mercy. There's no in between. So most teams we play aren't exactly eager for a rematch. We had to swear up and down you guys would be normal this time. So y'all better not be weird. All right, uh, we, uh, Yakusoku. What? <laughs> That's how you say promise in, um, Nihongo, aka Japanese. Is everyone ready to go? The other team got here early. <laughs> the chicken nuggets walk over to the field where the killer whales are already warming up. Thanks for being willing to play us again, guys. No problem. Time for our vengeance. Yeah, right. We destroyed you guys last time. Well, that was before our secret weapon joined the team. Secret weapon? We got a new guy who's pretty good. Oh yeah? Where is he? Junseo and Hayden look around amongst their teammates, but as the seconds pass, their faces grow more and more alarmed. I'm actually not sure. Maybe he got lost on his way driving here. Yeah, that seems typical of him. It's fine. We can wait a few minutes for him to show up. 20 minutes later. Oh no. No one came. He's decided... He just He's decidedly late at this point. I can't believe this. Where the heck could he be? Did you try calling him? He didn't pick up. Well, it's not like he can answer the phone if he's driving. You guys are pathetic. Making up some guy to blame your loss on. We're not making him up. He's real. And we didn't lose yet. Stop jumping to conclusions. Is it okay if we start playing without him? If he turns up later, he can join the game then. Yeah, sure. As the killer whales file into the dugout, Noelle starts trekking onto... trekking to her spot in right field. The scowls... she scowls disdainfully as a barren patch of grass as she passes it. Krissa likes pointing to the tiny patch and going, I'll defend that area, so you cover the rest of the field, okay? I hope that grass grows back soon, so I don't have to keep hearing that joke. Hey wait, Noel, you're playing second base today. I am? Why? Yeah, why? She ducks and covers whenever the ball comes her way. It's exactly why she needs to do it. I'm taking AP Psych, and I found out there's something called exposure therapy. It's where you make someone do something they're afraid of until they stop whining and get used to it. That doesn't sound like the textbook definition to me. Carissa, then how come when we went to the, that demon ride at Great America, you had your eyes closed the whole time? That was before I knew what exposure therapy was. Uh-huh. Wait, but I was second base. What happens to me then? You're playing left field now because you run fast. We're moving a whole bunch of people around, not just you two. 
Krista thinks she's a mega mind master now because of AP psychology. Hey, I never said that. <laughs> Noel begins trekking the second base. I do feel a bit equipped to man. I do feel a bit e better equipped to man second base now that I did when I was first roped into this club. I don't like to appear underinformed, so a bit after our first game, I read about baseball rulebook to cover it. Cover. Still, I really hope no one hits the ball in my way. To a surprise, Akarsha is already standing by second base. Bonjour! Why are you here? I'm a shortstop. I'm supposed to be here. What? Aren't you supposed to be closer to third base? Says who? The diagram in the baseball rulebook. Nah, the shortstop's position mirrors the second base, uh, the second baseman's. You're supposed to work together and vary your positioning to anticipate what the batters and runners do, you know? See? R right, I knew that. So, we're both covering the same base. Uh, won't that make things unnecessarily confusing? You're like a duo. It's a good thing. Yeah, we should negotiate who does what in different, uh, situations. Alright, fine. How about you cover second, uh, when there's a runner on first? And field the ground ball- And field the ground ball is close to us. And also take, uh, take care of the fly balls. You're just trying to get out of doing as much work as possible. The game kicks off, and to her relief, Min quickly strikes out the first batter. Good job! Just do that two more times, and we get to bat. Hayden digs into the batter's box next. Min throws a floater that curves up toward his head for a moment before dropping back toward the strike zone. Ah! Instead of swinging, Hayden flinches backwards out of the way. Strike! What's with you? Nothing, I'm just making sure I don't get hit in the mouth. I had a dream last night that my teeth were falling out. That's what you wasted your dream on? It's not like I can control what I dream about. Min hurls another pitch his way, but instead of dancing like usual, it's pretty much just sails straight down the middle. Rah! Hayden manages to make contact and drives the ball into grass. It bounces into the air for, for one singular terrifying moment. Noel sees it coming straight at her. Egad! I hate ground balls! Noel covers her face with one arm and half-heartedly attempts to catch the ball with the other. She braces for impact. Nothing hits her. On the mound, Min manages to intercept the ball by catching it behind her back without looking at it. Well. <laughs> when Min herself <laughs> looks shocked as she caught it. Just because it's cool doesn't mean she's out. Throw it to Furs. Min hastily lobs the ball to Liz. It just barely beats Hayden to first base. Out. Oh man, that was close. As Hayden heads back to the dugout in defeat, there's a distant shout. Sorry I'm late! Some guy is sprinting down the hill to the killer whales at, t at top speed. Sorry, sorry, sorry! Sapan? Where were you? The killer whale player sighs uh, despondently as he joins his teammates. I was driving over when all of a sudden a spider crawled up my leg, so obviously I crashed the car. Obviously! Are you okay? Don't worry, I'm fine. Just knocked a seat sign, a street sign over. Isn't that a crime? How big was the spider? Like this big! He pinches his thumb and his finger to demonstrate. <laughs> so small. But it was all hairy, so, pra so practically speaking, it was equivalent to a spider twice as big. Even if it was twice as big. Isn't crashing kinda an overreaction? No? Whatever, just get up to the bat already. It's your turn. This guy seems like a coward. I wonder what makes him their secret weapon. Saban digs in behind home plate. He's standing on the other side of the plate. He must be left-handed. Min rolls her next pitch, and the batter shifts into bunting stance in the second, uh, last second. He's not even going to try to hit it! He starts to run toward first base as the ball glances off his bat, singing the baseball bouncing towards Liz. She's forced to rush towards the field, leaving first base unmanned. I got it! By the time she scoops up the ball, Sapan is well on his way to uh, first base. He's fast. France! Frenchman! Oh, I need to cover first base since Liz isn't there. Noel uh, belatedly runs towards the base so Liz can throw the ball to her, but Sapan beats her there. 
Killer Whale's cheer as Sapon overruns the base. Yeah, Sub-Zero! Sub-Zero? That's me, they call me Sub-Zero, cause I'm so cool. Huh, no fair, I want a badass nickname too. Oh please, like what? Like, Sub-Zero. You're just going to copy him? Come on, go with Scorpion, come on! Uh, Seida shakes her head at Sub-Zero, bat as Sub-Zero basks under his teammate's praise. Who the heck bunts to get on, for, on base? I mean, if you're fast, it's doable. Lefties have a huge advantage when bunting too, because they're already two steps ahead of where uh, righty batters are when they lay down the bunt. That's so cheap. Well, that's the essence of baseball, no? Cheating on being cheap. Cheating and being cheap. I thought the essence of baseball was friendship and teamwork. Oh yes, that too. Uh, Junsei is up to bat next. He swings at the pitch. Uh, the knuckleball suddenly swerves outward as, uh, as if sensing the bat, dodging it entirely. Ugh! Dia misses the ball, uh, by a mile too. She rips her mask off and chases after it. Yeah! Sub-Zero takes off running towards second base. He's taking the chance to steal! I need to tag him out! Dia secures the ball and throws it to Akarsha. Got it! Never mind, looks like Akarsha is supposed to cover second base here. Sub-Zero skids to a halt halfway between the bases. Oh no! Because it was his choice to run, we need to actually tag him with the ball. Akarsha charges toward him, and Sub-Zero uh, turns around and flees back towards first base. Throw it to me! Kra! <laughs> Akarsha lobs the ball over, and Liz tags him out. No! Nice one, Akarsha. Akarsha? Who's that? You. I don't know who what you're talking about. My name is Sub-Zero. No, it's not. <laughs> team switch sides. As Noelle crosses the field, she's, uh, she's struck with a particular awareness of where she is. Barely a day ago, I was on the opposite side of the planet. It was in Taiwan. There was a garage trucks, uh, where a garage truck seeing Beethoven's for, uh, Elise, uh, while collecting the trash. For real? Holy shit, that's actually pretty crazy. <laughs> and now I'm here playing baseball. I'm wearing a little cap. Sweating and running on grass. Why am I here? It's a mistake that I'm here. Hello, Earth to Frenchman. What? You didn't hear a, th a thing I said. My apologies, what was it? I said, it's hot as balls out here. Not this again. <laughs> so what are you lost on thought about? Nothing really. It's just strange knowing that knowing I would have led a completely different life if my parents had stayed in Taiwan. I would have been somewhere who was close to your family, someone who was close to your family, someone who wasn't ignorant of her culture. Maybe I would have been a better person. Uh, I like you the way you are, though. And if your parents didn't move, we would never have met. Of course, because obviously that makes up for everything. Karsha grins, and the inside of Noelle's palm prickles. This is so peculiar. Is this what extreme anger feels like? But right now, I'm only pretending to be annoyed for com comedic effect. The sensation is so unbearable, she wants to scratch at it until it goes away. I mean, you went there on vacation. You're probably looking at it through rose-colored glasses. They probably have tons of struggles over there that you're clueless about. Even so, the standard of living there is on an entirely different level. This is backed up by actual s statistics. Not just my personal opinions. I don't know, man. It's not good to wallow too long in self-pity. Or else, you'll get lost in the sauce. The sauce? The what? Uh, what sauce? It's a metaphor for being out of touch with reality. But, I like to imagine barbecue sauce. <laughs> the rest of the chicken nuggets cheer as Dia bats Krissa in. Oh, they're just walking Dia like, uh, like last game. I told June I'd uh, shave his hair off in his sleep if he did that again, because it's not fun for Dia. Who's up next? Me, time to unveil my special technique. Wait, she better not be trying to trying that getting hit on purpose thing again. Okay. Alright, you know what, I'm gonna save here before it gets off into the crazy. And we'll start off uh, at the crazy next time. Anyways. 
Thank you all so much for watching. If you want to play this game for yourselves, link is down in the description down below, as well as a playlist to the first game as well. Um, thank you all again so much for watching. Please give this video a like, please share the friends, and don't forget to subscribe on your way out. This is Cyberwolf, signing off.